Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Quran Weekly. This is Abdul Nasser Jangda coming back to you with another installment of Stories of the Prophets. Today we have a very special treat. We're going to be talking about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the great companion of the Prophet sallallahu Umar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, tells us about a remarkable experience that he had with the Prophet sallallahu in the Quran before he became Muslim, before he accepted Islam. See, Umar radiallahu anhu, before he became Muslim, before he accepted Islam, he was actually quite staunchly opposed to the Prophet sallallahu and to Islam, and he was quite notorious for persecuting and torturing Muslims and for trying to attack the Prophet so he tells his story himself. He mentions that one day he went out looking for the Prophet ﷺ probably to you know, argue with him or fight with him, attack him, something of that nature. And he says that, I found the Prophet ﷺ had already gotten to the Kaaba, to the Haram, to the Masjid before me. And when I walked in, <clears throat> I saw the Prophet ﷺ standing there and praying. So I walked up behind him, probably with a bad intention, you know, he figured I can take an easy shot or a cheap shot at him, he's praying, he's preoccupied, he's looking the other direction. As soon as I got close enough to him, where I could hear what he was reading and reciting, and the Prophet ﷺ was standing in his prayer at the Kaaba, and he was reciting the Qur'an. So now the Prophet ﷺ goes there, <clears throat> standing in front of the Kaaba, he's praying, reciting the Qur'an within his prayer, Umar is creeping up on him, maybe with some ill intentions. And when he gets close enough to where he can hear the voice of the Prophet ﷺ reciting the Qur'an in his prayer, he hears him reciting Surah number 69, Surah Al-Haqqah. Al-Haqqah, Mal-Haqqah, Wa Ma Adaraka mal Right? And the Prophet ﷺ goes on reading and reciting the surah. And Umar ta'ala who says, I, f I just froze right there in my tracks. I couldn't go forward. I couldn't move forward. I was so captivated and mesmerized by what he was reading and reciting. And it was so powerful that it just gripped me. It froze me. And I was just frozen there listening to him. Until then when I started to think to myself, how is this having so much of an effect on me? I don't like this man. I disagree with him him and everything that he preaches. How can this be having this effect on me? Wait a second, wait a second. This is probably just some really fancy poetry I haven't come across before. And he says, the second that that thought started to cross my mind, the Prophet ﷺ recites the ayah, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ Most definitely it is the words of a very noble messenger. وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرٍ it is not the word of a poet. This is not poetry. These are not the words of a poet. تؤمنون, very little do you believe. And he says, the second I heard that, you can imagine standing there thinking, you know, this is, sounds like poetry. And right there on cue, the second you think that, you don't even verbalize it. You just think that inside of your head, inside of your heart. And the second, the second that thought crosses your mind, he reads the verse where Allah says, these are not the words of a poet, why don't you believe? Very little are you willing to believe? He says, it felt like somebody just punched me, like I got hit with a ton of bricks, knocked me off my balance. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second, wait a second. How do you know what I was thinking? How is that even possible? And he said, the thought started to cross my mind, in that moment, the only explanation I could come up with, he's got to be a sorcerer, or a soothsayer, a magician. He's got to be doing some spooky stuff here. How else would he know what I was thinking? And the Prophet ﷺ recited the next ayah, وَلَا بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنْ These are not the words of a magician. These are not the words of a sorcerer. These are not the words of a soothsayer. قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ You're not paying attention. Very little do you actually pay attention. Do you heed the reminder? Do you reflect on what's being said? And he says, it knocked me off my feet. And then, so what is this? If this is not poetry, and this is not sorcery, what is it? 
How can it be having such a profound effect on me? How can it be impacting me? And the Prophet ﷺ said, or he recited the next ayah, تَنزِيلٌ مِّن رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ The Prophet ﷺ recited the next ayah, تَنزِيلٌ مِّن رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ This is being revealed, being sent down from the Lord of the worlds, from the Master of all people everywhere and anywhere. This is the message that is being slowly, periodically, little by little, ayah by ayah, surah by surah, being sent down from the Lord and the Master and the Creator, the Sustainer, the Provider, the Protector of all the world, every single person. And he says the Prophet ﷺ recited till the end of the surah, and I was just frozen there listening to this, blown away. And until he finally finished reciting the surah, went into his ruku'ah, and he says, I just walked away from there, deeply affected. And he says, that's the first time Islam Im became embedded within my mind and my heart. And it wasn't until later where Umar ibn Khattab had another life-changing, right, life-altering, perspective-changing experience where he would actually go to the Prophet ﷺ and accept Islam and become a Muslim. And then he would tell the story years later. This is a beautiful example of the Prophet ﷺ and his connection with the Qur'an. It was his primary tool for preaching and teaching the message of Islam. And when he went through the difficulties that he went through in Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ sought solace and comfort and tranquility and peace and the calm amidst the storm by standing in prayer and reciting the Qur'an. I have an action item for y'all, Qur'an Weekly. What I want everyone to do is to learn some Qur'ans. Memorize a couple of lines today. And then read the translation of those couple of lines. And then stand in your prayer and read those couple of lines that you've memorized and read the translation of. Read them in your prayer and see the impact that it has on your heart. Inshallah, I want everyone to try to do that. And then come back and in the comments of the video, I want you to leave a comment saying what verses you memorized and you read the translation of them and then you read it in your prayer and what kind of an impact it had on you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all a meaningful relationship with the Qur'an, with the Book of Allah. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to Qur'an Weekly yet, make sure to hit the subscribe video, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, pass this video on to others and share it with others as well. Share the khair, inshallah, spread the love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice everything we've said and heard. Until next time, Quran Weekly. Jazakumullah khairan. I, I don't know if you heard that little bit of noise, but the cameraman is making a lot of noise here in the back. Until next time, Quran Weekly. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.